Hello, everyone. Waiting for people to get online. Then we start the show. Who will be first? Who will I see? Hello. I need to know the pronunciation of your name, Masako. I hope that's it. Hey, Dwayne, how are you? Hello, how are you? I love the shout outs at the beginning. Hey, Paul. Uh, Roxana, hello. Good night. Hey, Paul, again. Uh, Denny, how are you? My collection's growing, Denny. We have to talk about this. Hey, Alexis, how are you? Nick, my good friend Nick. Hello, and then Karim. Karim. Uh, yeah, love from Turkey. I've been to Turkey twice. Uh, Roxana, I'm doing really great. Uh, I'd like to say thanks to uh, also, yeah, I see Alexis. Uh, hey, JD, how are you? Veggies are not evil, it's meat. So, hello, Cynthia, how are you? Uh, yeah, Argentina, I still want to go there. Also, shout outs to Tanya, uh, let's see, Brett, and then uh, a lot of other people are online. Okay, cool, yes. All right. Um, yeah, yeah, we have to compare some guitars. I'm going to be on tour on the East Coast, so we have to talk. Uh, hey, Paul, met you in upstate New York? Yeah, it's a great place for me to play. I've played there many times. Hello, Brett, how are you? I love your posts, too. Uh, the words of wisdom from Brett. Uh, it's fantastic, really. Uh, and, and then, uh, hey, Jack, how are you? Hey, congrats on, on your band. Uh, it's fantastic. A million, a million uh, streams on Spotify. Great. Hey, Howard, how are you? Okay, a lot of people online now. Vaughn, how are you? I love this beginning. Vegan death metal, operatic rap. I don't know. How do you do operatic rap? It's like, yo, I'm... You know, so it's like, die. I don't know. Does that work? Hey, Mickey, how are you? Let's see. So, yeah. Anyway, no, I'm serious. I'm going to be getting some really exotic guitars in the collection. Not that I don't have enough already. I love guitars. So if anybody says, well, let's see. I'm saving up for like my fifth guitar. Five guitars. You need six. And six goes to seven. And seven goes to eight. And eight goes to 80. And 80 goes to 160. Hey, Joe, how are you? Okay, anyway, let me... Now, I just want to say the show every week. I've been doing this for over a year. And uh, there's a lot of really cool things. Hey, Renee, how are you? Uh, yep, only Joe E knows. I'm gonna. I'm trying to keep Joey at bay this week because he went a little crazy last week. Uh, because and then somebody asked, "What happens when you get when Joey and Robert get into an argument? What happens? What? Listen, I'm the star of this show. Quit goofing around. It's Joey. It's Joey cooling in my crib, cold video dubbing. See, he's a pretty good rapper. Well, what happens when Joey and Robert get into an argument? You know what I do? I watch a movie because there's, I have to have them both in sync. See, Robert is the world's angriest, angriest hand. He says nothing. He just plays. You know why he says nothing? First of all, I don't got him out, but he's got a pick in his hand all the time. See, in fact, there's a picture of me in my studio. I'm gonna show you guys this. This is pretty crazy. It was my aunt's wedding. And my sister, who I love dearly, Mother's Day wasn't a good day for me. That's why last week I was a little upset. Mother's Day, while well, my mom's not here, and my younger sister, who was a mom, who was a, it was a mom, uh, was not here either. But I'm going to show you guys a picture. This is before I even started playing guitar. Okay. Sorry, my studio is pretty big here. Now, this is me and my sister. When I was seven years old, my sister was five. Look at my right hand. I didn't even play guitar yet. I didn't look at him. What a handsome little guy. Uh, anyway, um, so I did not even play guitar. And look at that hand. It was already... It was like, 
I have been genetically pre <laughs> predisposed to play guitar. I'm walking down the aisle to my uncle, this is my mom's brother's wedding, my Auntie Pat, my Uncle Frank, and we always called him Auntie. We never called like Auntie, my mom's name was Joanne, so we, like Auntie Joanne, Auntie. We never said, and like some people go, eh, my aunt, eh, yes, my aunt. We never said my aunt because it's like, don't you know who we are? We're the Cavendishes. We are, we are the, the Thurston Howell the third. Now, and so, but here's me walking down the aisle, and my sister was scared to death, Marcia was scared to death. I'm walking down the aisle like I'm holding a guitar pick. When I saw that picture, I'm like, what is going on here? But it's so funny, you know, to think about this, like, guitar is my life. That's right. Hey, Parnell, how are you? Uh, anyway, um, I know a lot of people online here. And anyway, I just wanted to show that because we are talking today about picking. See, Robert has always had a pick in his hand, and when he doesn't, he still acts like it. So when, see, yeah, somebody said, I was born to play guitar, but it's true, I was. A and, uh, you know, I mean, it's so funny to see that picture. I'm literally walking whole with, with Robert is like, I don't got a pick yet, but I'm gonna have it. And you know why I said it like that? Because Joey has to talk. And so, but you know, when people say, what happens when they get into an argument? We watch movies, I love watch watching movies. Anyway, this is one of my signature guitars. And I'm gonna tell you guys something too. Um, you know, you've seen a lot in the news about gas prices going up and inflation. Uh, uh, inflation across the board is happening. A and uh, you know, it's, it's because, you know, overseas companies are charging Americans a lot of money to ship products and just, you know, COVID and the, the political environment, all this stuff. And, and so the best time to get a guitar or an amp is now. The Go DPS Music Live app, which is an affiliate company of Sawtooth and Chromacast, the three big companies, Sawtooth, Chromacast, and Go DPS, um, are having, when you order something through the app, it's 20% off. This tube amp is one that I helped design, just like the signature guitar. Um, all the products that we have designed are killing right now. They're doing really great because they're really good. But get it before the prices go up because across the board stuff is going to go up in price. It can't, you can't stop it. You know, I, I just, you know, inflation's starting to happen. So this amp can be had for 20% off. You can buy this guitar through the app, anything through the app. Just join the app. It's free. And then if you order something through the app, it's 20% off. But listen to this amp. It's got a Celestian. Not even with my overdrive. Here's the overdrive. Can you put down the string down here? Sounds awesome. And my song, I do for you.
sounds vicious. It sounds vicious. And it's got a great clean channel. Now what I do is I put on a little bit of, of what we have on this amp is we have reverb, we have we have uh, my signature delay pedal. So you hear you're like doo -doo 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 -doo, and then I use compression. So it gets our So it's just such a great sounding air. Uh, someone asked, uh, who is my inspiration for playing the guitar? Uh, bondage, what does that have to do with anything? <laughs> Some, this guy named Dwayne writes, bondage. Why bondage? Why bondage? Do you feel the need to be restrained? Do you feel the need to be dominated? Joey can dominate. So anyway, uh, what I try uh, what I love to do when I use amps like this is I love a clean sound with a little bit of that compression. Because it makes the notes pop. Now I'm not I'm using humbuckers, so I'm not using a single coil sound or the hybrids that get that really stratty or or telly sound. But it just has a really beautiful tone to it. Now, I wanted to talk about string skipping using alternate picking. Yeah, I love James Bond, I have to admit. I like Clint Eastwood movies too. I just love that surf sound that, like. Or like. It's called The Outer Limits. Or the first song I ever played when I was a kid. Like... about some string skipping. I wanted to play a lot today because, you know, I don't want you to think that, you know, every week it's going to be hand puppets or, you know, I, I take music very seriously, and but I have such a good time. I mean, you know, people that know me, my sense of humor is just outrageous because I like to laugh. I mean, what's wrong with laughing in this world? I, I think, you know, humor is, you know, when, when you start to censor humor, you know, or people get mad because you say something, yeah, you know, then, then I think we have a big problem because, you know, I'm, a little, I'm older than a lot of you. So I grew up in an era where you could have a Richard Pryor or an Eddie Murphy just say outlandish stuff or an Andrew Dice Clay or a George Carlin or, or even, a, you know, I mean, just the, the list goes on and on of just comedians. Sam Kennison. Oh, oh, oh. That was Joey's favorite comedian. Yes, yes, yes. I love Sam Kennison. 
and and so it, it's just the you know the whole idea of just fun having fun i have fun i love what i do i mean i get up every day thanking just saying thank you for the career that i have i am so busy right now i've got four recording projects i've got all this stuff going on uh you know i've got two i've got actually three tours booked and i'm pretty sure they're going to happen two in the united states one in europe and and the European tour is the best tour that I've ever been on. The United States tour, we're going to continue the Speed Kills tour that we had to stop because of COVID. It's going to pick up in September of this year. We're going to play, we're going to cover the entire United States in two six-week legs. So we're going to go out from September to almost the end of October, uh, you know, like September 7th. And then to like the 24th or 25th. And then I'm going to go, I'm going to leave for Europe and go out. My first show is November 9th to almost the 17th or 18th. So I'm really grateful. I mean, just so much is going on. But I love to give back. Uh, I, I just love to give back to people. And I hope you've gotten something out of these lessons. Now, the string skipping thing is really cool. Uh, I've been doing string skipping since I was a kid. And like where I heard the first time was El Demiel over go. And see, so if you want to start string skipping on guitar, like. And so now the end, I didn't string skip. I just had to make up an ending. But my Metal Method programs, uh, the Speed Kills series, and I show a lot of string skipping exercises. Now, this is using alternate picking. See, because, for example, if I want to alternate pick something like this. I love it. It sounds like Rambo, like Rambo. Rambo, lots of bullets in the gun. Yes. That's what alternate picking is. It's like, oh my God, death, death. Yes, yes. Power. Now also, there's, there's economy picking where he goes. I'm e I think nowadays I'm equally as good at economy. Uh, and I like economy picking because it's economical. And so what, what happens is instead of going... And everything alternate and everything like this, like a violinist, come, you know, just ripping out a violin bow, but it's going really fast. Economy picking's more like that. You know, that's, that's my analogy. And so, instead of going... Which is a lot of string skipping, I can go like this. This is economy string skipping. Now, and so, you can use a lot of different... Well, you can use... I think those are the two best techniques. Now, we're not talking about like... You know, we're not talking about tapping or any of the other uh, techniques involved. I'm purely talking about alternate picking, but I also wanted to bring an economy picking on this because one of the things you want to do as a guitar player <clears throat> when, you, when you are faced with a riff or faced with a, a passage, uh, like in No Boundaries, I just posted this piece of No Boundaries. It's alternate picking one note per string. It is super hard, super hard. And, and, you know, somebody wrote that No Boundaries is 25 years ahead of its time in the, in the composition. I'll agree with them uh, because it's still wickedly hard to play. Uh, and, and I think in 100 years from now on guitar, on, you, know, in, you know, in guitar, I think it's going to be, uh, you know, I'm going to blow my own horn a little bit, but I think it's going to be one of these pieces of music that has stood the test of time. And, you know, uh, I've been thinking about, you know, my legacy here and, and, you know, being in music for so long 
and, and I'm in great, fantastic physical shape. I mean, I work out just, you know, I like, I have a pretty big house, as you guys know, if you know my show. I can, I can run up and down three flights of stairs in my house. Here I'm in the bottom level of the studio. It takes two short flights of stairs to get to the first floor. Two short flights of stairs. We're talking like eight or nine steps, you know. Uh, some of the steps are nine, some are eight. And so I can actually run all the way up to the top in like 20 seconds and I'm not even winded. And, and I read something, you know, that, that that's a big barometer. Like when, when if you can't run or walk upstairs, if it takes you a long time, because it takes a lot of energy, you know, for your legs, for your heart, um, you're in some trouble. Well, I'm not in any trouble at all. And, and But I work at it. You know, this is, I practice what I preach. And, and see, all the things that I've told you in the last year, goof, first of all, humor. How, how did I get over the death of my mother, the death of my younger sister? The de we just had a death in the family two weeks ago. I wasn't in the greatest mood last week when I was doing the live stream. You know, I was just thinking that, you know, I have a 19-year-old nephew who's the greatest kid in the world. He's super nice. He's just a nice kid. And he's really outgoing and really smart. And, you know, I thought, you know, God, he's got, doesn't have a lot of relatives left. You know, I mean, you know, I'm going to be, I want, I want his uncle, meaning me, to be around a long time. His name is Alex. You've seen a lot of pictures of him over the years. But the things that I've told you are true and I, they work. You know, somebody said, well, how can you still play No Boundaries at that speed? Or how can you do, how can you do this? And still be so accurate because I, hey, Bill, Bill Peck, one of my best friends out there, great guitar player, great friend, and he looks really cool too. And, and uh, but, um, you know, how, what, what's my secret? You know, like, look at me up close. Yes, my eyes are blue and I'm not wearing contacts. Yes, I got my two front teeth knocked out playing hockey, but the rest of them are all mine. And so, you know, how do I stay well preserved? I take care of myself, duh. You know, it's like a car. Put oil in your car. Change the windshield, you know, put windshield washer fluid in it. You know, if you want to, you know, it's like, take care of yourself. And, and when I practice guitar, I'm not kidding. I don't have hand injuries because the things that I tell you are the things that I do. And that's the secret to it. You know, a, a lot of it is not rocket science. It's common sense. And unfortunately, in this day and age, we lack as a society a whole lot of common sense. You know, we have teachers that, that think they can teach their opinion. That's teaching. That's not teaching. Teaching is teaching a student something and keeping a level opinion you're not right wing or left wing or in between wing. You're not politically. That's a teacher's job is not to be politically charged. A teacher's job is to teach. How simple is that? Why do you think my methodology works so well? Because I just teach. I'm not here to tell you who to like. Do you like, I want it that way? Like it. I don't care. Do you like... Korean K-pop. Do you like K-pop? Do you like metal? Death. Destruction. Ma'am, I kind of like that. Call me crazy. And so, but it's my job to teach you how to play guitar. And I've taught some super famous people. People I can't even tell you who I teach. But I get a great sound. I do all this stuff because I practice what I preach, and that's the point. Now, with string skipping things, first of all, you have to learn a position. So, if, and you know, people say, oh, Michael loves the Dorian, Dorian mode. I don't love the Dorian mode. It's just a mode like any other mode. I like the Dorian position because that position goes. <laughs> Just like we use the word ergonomic for a keyboard, like, oh, it's ergonomic. There's a word in music, and I've used this before in these live streams, idiomatic. Idiomatic means it's comfortable and playable on whatever instrument you're playing. So string skipping and knowing this Dorian position 
is very idiomatic for the guitar. So I can go. See, that's one of the patterns, simple pattern. Then you repeat it again. so easy well it's not easy but it's so easy to understand and i got the idea for for string skipping when i i used to listen to ld meal like i said he went and so a little extra note out there and it goes by so fast I can do this all day all day all day and like I goof around with a lot of stuff like one of the ways I practice is like I work on the things that I tell you in my metal method program so one One, two, one, three, one, four, two, three, two, four, three, four, then four notes. But do you hear how clean that is? And I haven't slowed down at all. No, Joey ain't gonna slow down because I'm Joey. Robert ain't gonna slow down either. I there's there's a few reasons for this. Now, when I was younger, I never even used to have to practice <laughs> to play bass. I'm not kidding. I, I just like, oh, it's time to rip. Time to shred. But you know, as I've gotten older, I realize that's not really the best thing to do for your hands, for your mind, for anything. So I warm up. I practice. I practice vibratos. Listen to when I play No Boundaries. There's a, on my uh, page here, just scroll down uh, after this live stream and you hear not afraid to shake the note. See, one of the things that happens when a person gets older is if you listen to like, for example, David Coverdale, and I love David Coverdale. Somebody said, I love my sawtooth rise. That's the least expensive guitar in the sawtooth line. Yeah, I mean, we make great guitars. What can I say? Um, they're fantastic. That's why we're killing and we're doing a lot better than a lot of other guitar companies right now because they didn't do two things. One, they have nobody there that knows a lot as much about manufacturing as we do. Uh, and two, they completely underestimated COVID, which Sawtooth did not. How many companies new for 2021, bro? Well, you got them in stock? No, but they're like new, bro. Well, are they in stock? Can I buy? No, dude, but like, like they're new. Well, I knew that you ain't gonna have it together. And so uh, that's the thing, you know, we were not only proactive, when, when you look at a lot of these companies, now, uh, look at the ones who are killing. Look at people like me who every week I'm online and you know what, I'm on time. Everybody, anybody notice that, that I'm actually on time. And, and so, I, you know, I care about this because I care about you and I care about me. And so, and that's the most self-serving part of teaching because if I am truthful to you, it helps me be a better guitar player. So this is the whole premise of my methodology to give you the most accurate information. You know, uh, they, I've said this before, but the truth is the truth. You don't have to remember the truth. 
That's how criminals get caught because police will ask them the same questions over and over and over and over and over. And if you're lying and, and you have all these like alibi stuff in your head, pretty soon you screw up because you can't remember all the lies. You can't remember every little detail of the lie, but you can remember the truth. The truth is the truth. The truth in playing is the truth. You either can do it or you can't. And if you can't, how do you do it? It's that simple. And so, and that's what a good teacher should be. It should be somebody who, who imparts knowledge to you to help you play the way you want to play. Not to be some opinionated jerk who says, oh, don't play this because that sucks. That's not cool. Well, who are you? Who are they to say what's cool or not? They're not. They're here to impart knowledge to you. <laughs>
little queen for you. I love queen. Now I add my overdriver. Watch. You don't now you don't hear a volume jump, but gets the crunch. And so I love this two amp. And uh, this is the amp that I used when I played with Vinny Apice, the drummer uh, from Dio. You know, so I told you last week, somebody writes, here we're doing songs like this, right? We go. Or we're going. Some guy writes, dude, man, why don't you like play some originals? I'm like, bro, that is an original. That's Vinny's original. He was with Dio. He's the guy that went. So I thought it was funny. Now, we also did one of my songs that's going to be coming out. This is Vinny Apice on drums, his first job as a professional musician, as a teenager, was with John Lennon. I mean, how cool is that? So the guy, he's an amazing drummer, Rudy Sarzo on bass. So when you go... tribute to Randy there. Uh, when we play Crazy Train, he played Crazy Train with Ozzy and Randy Rhodes. These are originals. And so, yeah, Carmine is great too. I love Carmine. Yeah, Vinny's brother, Carmine. And so, but the point is this, that when you hear, for example, our version of Holy Diver, it's played by the guy who played Holy Diver. He was with Dio in Black Sabbath. We do Heaven and Hell. We do Neon Nights. Now, all those songs aren't out yet, but they're going to be. And the first one we released is Holy Diver, but you've got to download the app. So, in conclusion here, I just want to say this, that, that I've been here for over a year showing you a little bit about the way I think about life. One, guitar is life. Guitar is life, music is life. Two, humor is part of what I do. I like to be happy. I'm not a drama queen. You know, you read about, you know, like Ellen, the show Ellen, you know, how she's so nasty as a human being. And then at the end of her show, be nice, be nice. Well, she doesn't practice what she preaches. That doesn't mean you know, and she's worth probably five hundred million dollars. I don't even know, but you know, you know, people get rich, they get, they get really successful, but but they're not genuine. But see, the, here's the thing: sooner or later, people are going to find out about this. You know, and that's one of the best things about our society today. That you know, you 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 know, the person you are is the person people will find out you are, and. and uh, and that's, you know, I've just, I'm the same person, but I love to practice and I love to have fun. I love to laugh. And, and so, and I use the humor uh, in a lot of ways. One, you know, when I was going, you know, we've all gone through a lot of crises in our life, but um, it gets me over things. Like I just think of crazy things like Joey in my head says the weirdest, funniest stuff. And I'll just start cracking up. And then Robert will be like, he's so angry. He's the angriest hand ever. He's angry. All he wants to do is shred, shred, 24-7. See, if Robert was a human, he'd kill you. Robert slays. He slays on guitar. And, and one of the things that I can tell you, too, and I started to say this and then some questions rolled in, when a person gets older, 
what happens is, listen to, for example, I was talking about David Coverdale earlier, because people say sometimes, well, it's disjunct, and, but you know, I've got, I've got a thousand questions flying in. And, and so, uh, you know, I'm trying to answer your questions. I'm trying to do multiple things at the same time on the live stream. But one of the things, listen to David Coverdale. He's a perfect example of what happens. When you hear, like in the old days, oh, baby, you know, it's like, oh, keep away, can't keep away. He's got this really full, thick voice. But as a person ages, their vocal cords thin out. It's like a muscle that's not as strong as it used to be. It loses its strength and it gets thinner. So singers, as they get older, one, they lose the range. Two, they lose that girth, that 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 presence that it's called the timber. They lose the timber in their voice. Well, guess what? Not everybody has done that. Paul Rogers that played in Bad Company and Queen, it's like in the 70s, he still sounds amazing. He has not lost it. Tony Bennett, who I, I think is in his 90s, now I know he's ill, for his entire life, he kept his voice. He did not lose it. Me, as a guitar player and as a, and as a musician, when you get older, one of the things you have to watch is that you lose strength in your playing, that you start to play lighter. You, you start to lose that aggression that you had when you were younger. So instead of playing like... You start to play more tentatively. Like... The notes slur together. The, 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 the timing's not as good. It's like you play more tentatively. The vibrato's on. Like... Instead of. You know, instead of. Going... Instead of playing hard, you start to play less hard. It affects your intonation, it affects your playing, it affects a lot of things. So, this is one of the things that, that Robert has really been on his toes about. I always play super hard. If you hear, yeah, never lose the faith, of course. Uh, metal survives. I have a mantra. When I was going through a lot of stuff and all these people around me were dying and I had all this crazy stuff, I had a mantra, survive and thrive. Metal survives, metal thrives. During COVID, you had two choices. You either retreated and let the government pay for your stuff and sit on your butt, or, and I don't mean that, I'm, I'm not trying to be political, but um, a lot of people just took money, or you just give up. You don't have a job, you know, or, you be pro see, or you be proactive and just get out there and say, I'm not going to let this defeat me. That's it. I'm not going to let this. And so when I practice, like here, listen to this. It's super hard. I never lose sight of the fact that you play no matter what age with the energy of youth. So I'm going to just conclude this lesson today. And the world according to Mikey, because I wanted to be a little more serious and, and say string skipping is not hard. Get my speed kills programs. Go to mentalmethod.com. You have to learn the position first. Know that it's alternate picking second. And slowly play the progressions. Uh, there was a thing when I, when I studied French in school, écoutez et répétez, listen and repeat, repeat. Repeat is the, mo the key element in all this. Just play it over and over and over till you get it. Believe you can get it in your head, believe you can make it happen in your fingers, and play hard, play hard, play aggressive. Do not ever wimp out. Metal thrives because metal survives. I'm Michelangelo Badio for Sawtooth Guitars, Sawtooth Amps, Chromacast Music, and Go DPS Music Live. Download the Go DPS app. You get 20% off of everything. Thank you so much. Hasta la vista.